You know, a lot of fishing videos start in some exotic location, Costa Rica or Florida. But we're here in the middle of Manhattan. Where we're getting ready to go tag some stripers right before Memorial Day weekend. Stripe bass is, of course, one of the most popular species in our area. And here in New York City, there's an outstanding bite. We hope to find today, we're going to show it to you while we put some satellite tags into some cow bass. Let's go catch them up. Great fish tag research here with the Fisherman Magazine and Avionics fishing on rocket charters. We're fishing in the Hudson River estuary. Uh, the Hudson River is the second largest estuary in which striped bass come to spawn before they continue um, their ocean migrations for uh, north for the summer and fall. Um, it is our intent today to catch a striped bass 35 inches or over and tag it with this state-of-the-art uh, piece of technology. This is a Wildlife Computers Mini Pat tag. Um, and this tag is very cool. Um, it collects uh, temperature, depth, and light information. And the light information is what we're going to use to actually create a track of this fish uh, throughout, its, throughout its movement. Um, it's very cool because the temperature and depth profiles of striped bass are largely unknown and nobody has ever actually looked at their long-term movement uh, with satellite tags before. So this is a very groundbreaking um, study that we're doing here today. And so once we catch um, an eligible striped bass, we're going to put uh, this little nylon medium domeyer anchor into, into the intermuscular area, the tergiophore, of the striped bass about five centimeters from the dorsal midline at an angle above all of the visceral organs uh, and make sure that it's actually intact there and so this tag will stay with the fish uh, throughout the duration of deployment. Uh, we have programmed the tag for five months um, so hopefully uh, it will actually record data throughout the entire five month period. Um, if you happen to catch this tag, uh, we are offering a reward um, for either returning it to us, but it's actually our preference that you just take a picture of it. And if it's a healthy fish, uh, return it to the water so we can continue collecting data um, every single day that it's on the fish. Um, at the pre-programmed time, so at October 22nd, 2019, um, the tag will actually release from the fish at this point right here. It'll float to the surface and all of the temperature, pressure, and light information um, that's stored inside of the tag will actually transmit through the antenna to Argo satellites and back to us so we're actually able to figure out where the fish was every single day. Um, should we get the tag back, that would be amazing because we can actually get every single minute of information um, that, that was on the fish. So Naviotics is really proud to be part of this event because we've been with Grays and we've got our charts on their website currently so any of the fish tagging they've done can actually see the tracks and the stuff that's been reported already. So we were sitting in a meeting and I started talking to Mike Caruso with the fishermen we said you know we need to put something together here in the northeast and do something with striped bass. You know this fishery has gone under under a lot of changes. We really need to find out what's going on and because it's never been done in this length of time we're really excited to see what the data is. Here in the Northeast, striped bass is a major fishery and really important to Navionics because we have a lot of Navionics users in the Northeast. The spots we're at here have been areas that have been logged by different boaters and fishermen. So we're hitting different sloughs and different shoals 26. and that's where we're starting to catch a lot of these stripers. We put some spaghetti tags in. So we're waiting for that big striper to come along, put this satellite tag in, be able to check it out on the fishermen's oh, website and see a Navionics app exactly where that fish has gone through its travels. We're really hoping to learn a lot and, and do a lot of good for this research for this fishery. Uh, so we're really looking for a good candidate uh, for this really expensive uh, satellite tag. So what it makes a good candidate, uh, we're going to catch a fish that hopefully is caught very quickly, not really laboring on the line, um, is very healthy, uh, meaning that it's lively and it's not bleeding and then it's hooked in the mouth. Uh, we're going to net it, remove the hook, uh, measure it, 
and all that is going to happen um, on, on the deck um, with a uh, wet cloth covering its, its eyes. Uh, we're gonna have a hose running through its mouth um, and we're gonna tag it. And all of this is going to be under two minutes. Uh, so the air exposure time to the fish is going to be very low. Then we will revive the fish at the side of the boat and make sure that it swims away well with this really cool piece of technology. Put this tag in, please. Okay. I need a measure real quick. Okay, I got Perfect. Behind one of the scales. There we go. Okay, Captain, Secure. let it go. Everything's turned on. Everything's great. Wait, let's uh, let's revive him a little Good bit. We've had great success with inshore species in gray fish tag research's model in other parts of the world. We've been effective in learning and sharing our information openly with the public on rooster fish in Costa Rica. We've done amazing work with striped marlin in Cabo San Lucas. The key to what we're doing is open access. We want to share all the information from all these products with the public. We're working in partnership with NOAA Fisheries in Florida on some swordfish studies. Um, fish tagging is fun, it's interactive, and we recommend everyone who can get involved. Our model is designed to provide these products, not this one, but these free to every charter boat captain in the world. We want them, when they're releasing a fish, to collect some data, put these tags in the fish, and have a little bit of fun with their clients as well. Um, it's super interactive. In our model, you get to name your fish. Um, and we're hopeful that all this data that we're collecting can be used someday to make really good decisions on managing all these fish species that we love. Great fish tag research is not only open access, but it's all species. So if you catch a sea robin here in Raritan Bay, if you catch a small striper, anytime you're releasing a fish, just place this little tag in it. It's cool, it's fun, and at some point we're going to know a lot more about the fishing and the species we love. We'd like to get more people involved in what we're doing. Um, this type of work takes years and funding and there's a lot of moving parts. And we also, in an effort to raise funds, this is a nonprofit. Um, you can go to our crowdsourcing page at GoFundMe and look up Great Fish Tag Research to get involved with this striped bass study here in New York. Um, it's all throughout New England. And contact us anytime. Info at grayfishtagresearch.org.
English. We've got two fish tagged with satellites. It's late in the day here. You know, we've put some, some work in. You know, we've got some heavy wind and the tide is ripping, but we've managed to get two of the right fish. Uh, one in the 40 inch range, one in the 34 inch range. Uh, released healthy. Um, you know, we're off and running here with our first tagging expedition, and uh, you know, we have high hopes for seeing what these fish reveal in terms of their, well, where they go and how deep they go, and you know, the water temperatures, and, and, and uh, as much as we can learn. So, guys, where do we go next? What's the next? One of the things that I'd like to comment on this day is, as I'm standing here looking at the Statue of Liberty with my good friends and some new guys we just met, in great fish tag research, having a sponsor pay for tags is awesome. But having the sponsor come fish and be a part of it, Paul caught all the fish today. We tagged over 12 striped bass with conventional tags, two with sat tags, and that's the coolest part of the day. He caught them, he got to be a part of the work, these young guys showed up and really put us on the meat, worked their butt off to get the fish. I don't think it gets any better than that, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, Paul. Oh. So 13 fish were tagged. Two of them have satellites in them. And, um, you know, the next step is really to find out what happens. You know, the recovery really is the next the next step, or the or the uplink, if, if, uh, if that happens. Either of the two uh, are the options here. Uh, so let's uh, keep our fingers crossed for a long, sustained, uh, duration uh, so that we have the most possible data to learn and so this has been an exciting day and uh, a milestone I think in the history of striped bass. So we had a successful day of tagging stripers on the Hudson River and now I'm standing in the middle of traffic. What better way to end a beautiful couple of days with Navionics, Gray Fish Tag and the folks at the Fisherman Magazine. We're going to head out in the morning again and catch them up but first we've got a show to see. See you later. I'm walking here! <laughs>